been a family therapist for decades and I've had lots of kids come into my office, either the parents come in and they're raising a very challenged child with a, a, a diagnosis of something, you know, that, that's quite significant or the child's just a little quirky or different, has trouble socializing, has trouble being appropriate, saying the appropriate things, is really ramped up all the time or hyper or more withdrawn, you know, more introverted, extremely shy. And in any, in, in almost all of those cases, even though the parents just knock me out, they're so, they just show up almost all the time in the most beautiful ways. There is a path to getting there. And I think what I, well, I know what I love about what you're doing and the book that you wrote, Differently Wired, and, uh, and the class and, that we're doing is that, um, Acceptance is not a one-time thing, is it? No. I, you know, I talk with a lot of parents about this, and I think that's one of the reasons why my community has resonated so much with me is because I'm, you know, I've been doing this work for a long time. I've created this community. I'm very open about our story, and I, I, I'm not there. Like, I, it's not a destination, right? It's, it, it's just... Um, it's work. It's an it's a, it's ongoing commitment and attention to to parenting, and I think that's hard for a lot of parents to wrap their heads around because we want we we don't want to feel this way because not being accepting of who our kids are doesn't feel great. Yeah, and yet you know one of the things that we'll we're going to talk about today for a few minutes and then in our you know go in depth on Wednesday and in, in the class, which by the way you can catch the replay if you can't join us live, and we've got. Um, kind of tiered pricing so almost anyone can sign up and we are scholarshipping people who can't afford to come other people are paying a little bit more to help offset the cost of that we're going to give you the audio recording so we really want to push this out in a big way for parents because um, this notion of coming to acceptance and being real about the journey and being real about the challenges isn't there a lot of you know still this uh, a struggle with even saying things like, I don't really like my child today. I love him, but I'm not very fond of him. I mean, can you speak to that? Oh, absolutely. That's something I hear so much about is just this um, perpetual, it's kind of a sense of failure and guilt and shame all rolled into one. And when you have a child who is challenging you and not only your ideals, but you're often having to show up in a way you didn't anticipate maybe to advocate or to push or to explain or help other people yeah. accept your child, um, then we can, we can just find ourselves not really enjoying, <laughs> enjoying uh, the plight that we might be thinking we drew the short straw sometimes. And, wow. uh, yeah. And then you're seeing all your friends post these pictures of their kids at the recital and you have a child who couldn't possibly take a class and be still. And, you know, I just want to say this so loudly, even though I won't raise my voice <laughs> louder, that as a therapist, whatever you're experiencing is okay. And in this notion or this, this sort of stench of guilt and shame is not your friend ever. Right. I mean, occasionally little doses of guilt, like if I'm rude to someone, a telemarketer, I might feel a little sting inside myself. And that's good because it motivates me to just try a little harder to be polite and patient. But in general, um, the, the reason that I love what you're doing, Debbie, and the books that you're writing and all of the way you're representing your story is that it's really kind of you're, you're vigilantly trying to announce that feeling badly about how you feel about your child on any given day or the sadness, the loss of the, the child you thought you were going to get or the disappointment or anger that you feel when somebody can't bother to invite your child to the birthday party. Yeah, maybe he's a little odd or a little disruptive, but you know, he still has feelings or that the teachers are constantly complaining about how he's, you know, being difficult in classroom or disruptive. Um, just say a little bit more about the importance, please, please of, of removing that kind of layer of, on top of all the challenges that you're facing, feeling kind of like 
like the failure or like you're not loving enough or patient enough or accepting enough. You should be more spiritual about it all. Yeah. I mean, I think there's so little priority spent on ourselves in this, you know, we're doing so much for our kids. We're organizing their lives. And we also feel like our kids are a reflection on us. You know, they're like, you talked about the Facebook that I call it the compare and despair cycle, especially around graduation and all those things that happen. Um, but we just place all these demands on ourselves. We don't see our kids meeting those and we make that mean something about us that we're failing. So we don't want to talk about it. Um, it's just this perpetual thing. And it's so important to honor our experience 